Christian drink alcohol? <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're going to find that out today. So if there's any one of us that is doing that thing today, we're going to know the truth. Amen? And we're going to find out how can ungodly habit affects others. Praise the Lord. Following from that, there will be a discussion summary by Pastor Felicia and Pastor Nikki. Announcement and first timers will be done by Pastor Yemi and the closing and benediction by Pastor Felicia. Praise the Lord. So we welcome Pastor Kunle. Who is it? Pastor Kunle, praise the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. First of all, I'd like us to pray. Today is the last day of the sixth month. It's the last day of the first half. Tomorrow we are entering into the second half of the year. In every sporting event, the half time is when the coach gets his team together or a team together to make sure whatsoever the losses in the first half, there is damage control so that in the second half they can find restoration. So we want to pray today that the second half will be better than the first. Yeah. We want to thank God for keeping us through the first, but declaring that as we are entering the second half, heaven will open for us. So I want you to stand on your feet and just lift up your voice to heaven. First of all, let it be the voice of gratitude. Gratitude to the King of glory. Gratitude to the Most High God. Gratitude that the first half of this year did not swallow you. Gratitude that God saw you through, kept you through the first half. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all adoration. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you that you are alive. You traveled. God kept you. You moved. God helped you. Everywhere you went, God was with you. They didn't bring your dead body back. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for seeing me through. In my going out, in my coming in, you have been faithful to me. That day we bless you. That day we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Do you know that there are many body parts that we have that they use in describing the almighty God? The eyes of God washed over you and did not allow you even to be injured. The Bible says his eyes followed us. The Bible says that God has nostrils and that when he breathes from his nostrils, it's fire and he dealt with your enemies. The Bible says God has a mouth and when he breathes from his mouth, his breath gives us life. The Bible says God have ears, he can hear and he paid attention to your prayer, paid attention to what you were saying. Do you know the Bible says God has mouth. He speaks to Moses, mouth to mouth. This year, God has been speaking to you, mouth to mouth. Do you know the Bible says God has hands. His hands have been carrying us. Do you know the Bible says God has fingers. His fingers have been dealing with the powers of darkness. There is somebody hearing me. The eyes of God kept you. The mouth of God kept you. The hands of God kept you. The ears of God paid attention to you. I want you to begin to say, God, I thank you for your eyes. I thank you for your mouth. I thank you for your ears. I thank you for your hands. I thank you for your fingers. I thank you for your breath. I thank you for life. I thank you. I am thanking you this morning. I'm thanking you. Your hand spoke for me. Your mouth ministered to me. Your ears paid attention to me. Your eyes washed over me. Your breath gave me life. Lord, I am saying thank you. I really appreciate you. I say I am grateful. I am grateful. 
I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful, Lord. I say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, El Shaddai. We bless your name. We worship you. We adore you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Now lift up your voice and begin to speak prophetically into the second half of the year. The Lord will show my greatness. The Lord will increase my greatness. The Lord will take me to greater heights. Heavens will open for my sake. The name of the Lord will be named upon me. The second half of the year, you will not swallow me. You will do me good. You will minister life to me. You will be a blessing to me. In the name of Jesus, the increase of the earth shall be mine. The second half yield this increase. The second half will bless my soul. In the name of Jesus, my greatness will come. In the mighty name of Jesus, heaven will open for my sake. In the name of Jesus, I'll be highly favored. I'll be mightily blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah. We bless your name. We worship you. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father eternal, we thank you. King of glory, we bless you. Thank you for bringing us to the very last Sunday, the very last day of the first half of this year. Thank you for making us to see the half of the year. He that started a good work in us is more than able to complete it. We know you that have got us this far. You will make us to see the end of this year and the beginning of the new year and many, many more years to come in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we are grateful. Daddy, we also are speaking into the second half that this second half will yield this increase to us. It will do us good. It will bless our soul. It will bless our life. In the name of Jesus, only good reports shall we hear concerning everyone in the second half. In the name of Jesus, that the whatsoever is lost in anyone's life, in the second half there will be restoration. Whatsoever is not yet received, in the second half this year, you will bless us with them. Our prayers will be answered. Heaven will open for us. By the end of this year, all of us will carry the baskets of thanksgiving. We will come to your altar rejoicing. Thanking God for a glorious year. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. And that day, as we go into your word this afternoon, we ask that you speak to our heart. We ask that you open the hearts of your people. Every preconceived notion, daddy, please take them away. Let the word of God take preeminence. Let your counsel be established. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church of God will say a good amen. God bless you. Please clap your hands and celebrate God. The most high God, the king of glory. Amen. Now, we had the church a little bit differently arranged so that we can be able to see each other face to face instead of everybody seeing the pastor and the pastor seeing everybody, but you are not seeing each other. That's why we arranged this way. So it would be good if the ministers on this side can sit here so that we can allow more of our congregation members to move forward. Amen. Now, what we are doing today is talking about something that is very controversial. Something that many churches will not even want to dabble into. But I want to please admonish that it's better we have understanding so that we can be able to know the best things or the right things to do. And I pray that as the understanding comes today, grace will be available. So like I have prayed, please open up your hearts and um, just allow the word of God to minister to you. Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17. Ephesians 5, from verse 16 to 18 really. The Bible says, redeeming the time... Because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. 
Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with what? With the Spirit. And he's talking about Spirit with a capital S. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. In Acts of the Apostles in chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost came, the Bible says that everybody began to speak in different tongues. And people were hearing them speaking. And they came and they said, this man must be drunk. They must be drunk. And Peter had to come and say, it's still very early in the morning. We are not drunk. This is just what Joel the prophet had said before. That a day will come that everyone will be filled with the spirit of God. It means the will of God is for us to choose. To choose whether we'll be filled with wine or we'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. I have searched through the Bible. And I must tell you, I have not seen anywhere where it's particularly written that if you drink wine, you are committing a sin. But I must tell you that we must also know what is the will of God. And God says, my will is don't be filled with wine in excess, rather be filled with what? Can I hear it loud and clear? In fact, people who indulge in drink say, Pastor, didn't Jesus turn water into wine? People who indulge in drink will tell me, didn't Paul say to Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, when you read in verse 23, he said, don't drink water alone, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy often infirmities. So the reason why Paul said to Timothy to take a little wine for his stomach's sake and for his often infirmities was because Timothy was sick. Are you sick? Do you want to be? So Timothy had been taking water only, praying and taking water. And Paul was simply saying, take a little wine. What Paul was telling Timothy is, use some medication. Ask doctors today, many of the medications that are used are either made from alcohol or from substances that we will call abusive substances. Oh, we are trying to legalize marijuana in America now. In many places, it's already legalized. Amen? But do you know there are medications made from it that is very useful in medical practice, but the issue is is it good to indulge in it? The Bible tells us that all things are lawful. But not all things are expedient. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, when you read in verse 12 to verse 14. He said, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. There are many people that are hearing me today in this church and those who are hearing online that they are brought under the influence of alcohol because they didn't see it anywhere written that it is a sin to drink alcohol. It may be lawful, it may be okay, but it's not expedient. Are we communicating something? Now the expediency of it is the fact that it's brings people to a level of addiction. And what is addiction? Addiction is simply something that has a controlling influence over the user. Addiction is something that has what? A controlling influence over the user. And so when people are addicted to something, a substance some are addicted to cigarettes, some are addicted to alcohol, some are addicted to drugs. Whatsoever the addiction might be, it usually starts small. And then it begins to have a controlling influence over the individual. 
There are many lawsuits in America because doctors uh, made medication and I mean pharmaceuticals produced medication and they didn't write on it that this particular medication can be addictive and people started using it and after using it they now find out that people are addicted to those things and it has become an epidemic. Hello? Now, I don't want to go into the politics of it. But I want us to look at the, I want us to use logic because we are logical people. We always try to reason logically. If they can take pharmaceuticals and find them billions of dollars simply because they didn't write on their medication that the medication is addictive, and it has made people to become addictive. It means what is lawful, what is good can become bad. Is God talking to somebody? What is good can become bad. Alcohol is not expedient because it is addictive. It is addictive. And I will show you from scripture. The Bible tells us when you read in Proverbs 23, in verse 29, and I'd like you to please uh, follow me as we look at it from the screen and on the, in the scriptures. He said, who art woe? Who art sorrow? Who art contentions? Who art babbling? Who art wounds without cause? Who art redness of eyes? Are they talking about somebody? They say, they that tarry long, at what? Some people drink wine to a point where their eyes become red. He said, they that go to seek mixed drink. Continue. He said, look not upon the wine. Do what? That is, don't even go near it. Look not upon the wine when it is red. Some young men are eyeing me. I, I just saw one hide now. Just, just the, way, the way the man eyed me, I was like, am I safe? <laughs> he said, look not upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. You know, wine in the cup moves itself. And the red color, very addictive. There are some people that when they just see that color and they see it moving in the cup, they're like, hmm, hmm. They already know what it can do to the body. Hello? And then the Bible went on, it said in verse 32, at last it biteth like what? Or say it now. He said, it bites like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thy eyes shall behold strange women. Now give us the new living. That verse 33. Give us the new living. Quickly. He said you will see hallucinations. Your eye will be seen double. He said you will say crazy things. Things that are crazy. Will come out of what? Out of your mouth. He said, yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea. You'll be telling yourself, ah, I am swimming, oh, I am swimming. <laughs> or as he that lieth on the top of a mast. Why? Because the person has taken wine. Usually it starts with a sip. From a sip it goes to a cup. From a cup it goes to a bottle. From a bottle, it goes to a carton. I want to plead with you. Be, not be filled with wine. But with who? Holy Spirit. You have a choice. You have a choice. And I pray today that the addiction of alcohol will not grab you. Amen. I say it will not grab you. Amen. Why do people fall into addiction? Addiction comes as a result of a person finding human solutions to certain problems in their lives. Sometimes people can be addicted to wine or a particular substance 
or just because there is some vacuum in their life. Maybe that man gets home and the wife is nagging. You just tell himself, I'd rather get drunk and just get home and sleep. I won't even notice a nagging nature. Maybe the woman is feeling the man is always absent. And to fill up that absence, she begins to use the bottle. I want to let you know, it's not only men who drink. There are women who drink. <laughs> Pie! There are women. Am I correct? Yes. But they are not in ICB. <laughs> you know them. There are more. Can you hear? Say there are more. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So addiction only makes you to have temporary solution to a problem that is there. Listen to me. While the person is drunk, he forgets the problem. When you wake up, the first thing you will see is the problem. So why are you deceiving yourselves? Why are you denying yourself the, 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 the wisdom to be responsible and to face the problems that you have? I pray that God will give you the courage and boldness to face the challenges that confront you in the name of Jesus. What is my warning? My warning is simple. Don't start what you can't finish. Don't do what? I have come to find out that we don't really have that self-control over certain things in our life. So please don't start it. Sometimes I see the compulsive nature of people when they need to get cigarettes. Their hands are shaking. It's like if you don't give it to them, there's going to be a problem. You will see somebody go through the storm, go through the rain, just to buy a cigar. Go through many difficulties. So growing up as a young child, I saw these things and I said there must be something about this thing that men don't have control over. The only way for me not to experience it is that I won't even start it. So I never did what? Tried cigarette. When I was growing up as a little child, my mom because we are all boys, he just called us to the kitchen one day. And he said, can you bring the hot drink? There was hot drink, gin, shinap, in the house. And we always see them give visitors those drink. And maybe she had noticed that as little boys, out of playing pranks, we had tried to sip them. But she wanted to teach us a lesson. So while she was walking in the kitchen, she was cutting red meat, beef. She was cutting. And we are helping her. She has no girl. We are all boys. And we are working with her in the kitchen. So if, something, if anybody told you boys don't work in the kitchen, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's not correct. And so she cut the meat. And she said, bring the shinap. And I was like, shinap, well, for what? She said, I want to show you something. And she poured a complete bottle of shinap in a big bowl. And then as she had finished cutting the meat, we are going to boil. I knew the process. But rather than put on the fire to boil, she just picked it up and started dropping them inside the bowl of shinap. I was like, is this a new style of cooking? <laughs> but do you know what happened? Have you ever tried putting meat inside hot oil? That was exactly what happened. As the meat was touching the hot drink, they began to sizzle. It was like they were dropped in hot oil. They were sizzling. In a minute, less than a minute, red meat became brown. No fire, nothing. Get home and try it today. My mom said, I just want you to know what happens inside when you drink alcohol. She didn't need to say anything further. I pray for you today. Whatsoever is the bondage of alcohol that has taken you over and is killing you inside, 
may you be delivered. And so to help us understand this a bit more, I'm going to bring you a medical perspective of what we are sharing. And to do a good job, I've asked the medical doctor to please come and talk to us. The dangers of alcohol. Amen. So please, I want the media unit to bring up the medical slide and bring on the screen. And I'm going to welcome Dr. Tuluwumi to please come and take the mic. She's going to continue from this point. I don't, I, I've already told you that it's not written anywhere that wine is a sin. But the issue is, is it expedient? Is it expedient? Dr. Tulumi. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Tulumi. Uh, I am here to talk to you about the medical perspective, uh, about the effects of alcohol and smoking on the body. I will be talking about each uh, separately. One second, please. It's working. Okay. So to start off, I want to first talk about the social impact of alcohol. You know, alcohol not only affects the individual, but also affects the individual's family and the society at large. And studies show that alcohol, people that are dependent on alcohol are more likely to call in sick from work, they're more likely to be less productive at work, and they're also more likely to be involved in work-related injuries. Alcohol has also been shown to play a substantial role in the domestic violence cases that we see. And also very important to note is that every single day, about 29 people die from motor vehicle accidents involving alcohol impaired drivers. So that is a big issue in our society. Also, let us not forget that both alcohol and nicotine are very addictive. And when you're addicted to something, it consumes your mind, it consumes everything, and takes over your life and essentially has power over you. So to start off, I'm going to talk about the effects of alcohol on the body. Um, you know, I've spoken about the social impacts of, of alcohol and substance abuse in general, but for the purpose of this discussion, I'm going to solely talk about the effects of alcohol on the body, essentially how alcohol affects the different organs in the body and also how it puts the individual at risk for disease. Okay, so alcohol affects various organs. One of the organs that it affects is the brain. Alcohol interferes with the brain's communication pathway and with chronic alcohol use, the brain essentially atrophies, it shrinks. And this affects the person's memory, the mood, and behavior. And this is something that is lasting. It's not just an acute thing. Um, you know, I'm, I work in the emergency room and I see these patients day in, day out, and they have a lot of medical, psychological issues from alcohol. Alcohol also affects the heart. It causes something called a cardiomyopathy which is essentially the stretching of the heart muscle and it stretches to the point that the heart fails. So these alcoholics are more likely to have heart failure than uh, non-alcoholic. The alcohol also affects um, the heart. It causes an irregular heartbeat, what we call arrhythmia, which puts the individual at risk for sudden death. Alcoholics are also more likely to have stroke and also hypertension. One of the main organs that alcohol affects is the liver. And with chronic alcohol use, um, the liver essentially becomes damaged. The first level of damage is uh, when the liver becomes fatty, and then progressively there's inflammation in the liver parenchyma. And thirdly, uh, this leads to a fibrosis of the liver, where there's scar tissue in the liver. And lastly, the last stage of the liver damage is liver cirrhosis. And what happens, if you look at the picture, on your right is the healthy liver. It has a nice smooth contour. And on the left is the cirrhotic liver. Uh, there are various complications 
of liver cirrhosis, and liver cirrhosis itself is quite fatal. Um, the liver helps to detoxify a lot of toxins in our body, and when a patient has liver cirrhosis, these toxins are not able to be eliminated in the body. Many times they, um, they manifest in the brain. So a patient with liver cirrhosis can have uh, various stages of confusion. Also, people with liver cirrhosis have an accumulation of fluid in their abdomen, called ascites, and that itself has its own complication as well. People with liver cirrhosis also tend to bleed easily. And many times I see them in the emergency department, they come in with a GI bleed. So they're vomiting blood, they have rectal bleeding, and this, it can be quite severe, and many people die from it. Also, alcohol affects the pancreas. Alcohol causes inflammation in the pancreas and makes it non-functional. Many times, uh, the pancreas it functions to uh, aid in digestion. So enzymes are created in the pancreas to help us digest food. So when there's inflammation in the pancreas, uh, the person has persistent vomiting, they have abdominal pain, and, and such. Okay. Alcohol has now been shown to be a carcinogen, meaning that it causes cancer. The American Cancer Society has now said that no amount of alcohol is safe. And the more alcohol that you drink, the more likelihood of having various cancers. And these cancers are the head and neck cancer, esophageal cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, and colorectal cancer. So according to the American Cancer Society, no amount of alcohol should be drank by any human being. Alcohol also affects the immune system, uh, putting the person at risk for various infections. Chronic drinkers are more likely to contract diseases such as pneumonia and TB. Alcohol has also been shown to cause insomnia. Although alcohol is a sedative, alcohol uh, helps people to fall asleep, but research shows that alcohol actually diminishes the quality of sleep, particularly the latter half of the sleep cycle. So, is any amount of alcohol good for the heart? Some people, I've heard people tell me that, you know, that their doctor have told them that a little bit of alcohol may actually be good for their heart. And maybe three years ago, if I had made this uh, presentation, I would have said, yes, yeah, some studies does show that a little of alcohol may be good for the heart. But recent studies are actually showing that those past studies were not good studies. There was a new study that came out in 2018 that showed that there's no amount of alcohol that is good for the body, and alcohol is not good for the heart, no matter how small it is. The study also pointed to the fact that alcohol is a carcinogen, that it causes cancer. And the study also looks at the burden of alcohol consumption as a cause for various accidents and uh, increased risk for suicide. So that's essentially it with alcohol. Based on the evidence, medically speaking, alcohol is not a substance that a human being wants to consume. Now I move on to the effects of smoking on the body. So one in five deaths each year in the United States is due to cigarette smoking. Cigarette smoking causes more than 480,000 deaths every year in the United States. And the picture that you're looking at is a picture of a woman named Terry Hall. Um, I, know, I don't know if many of you have seen her in various advertisements. So she told her story about how she became addicted to smoking and the effect of smoking on her life. She started smoking in high school. It was a social thing for her, you know, in high school she wanted to be cool, and then she became addicted. By the time she was 40, she was diagnosed with oral cancer, and also diagnosed with throat cancer. She later, after battling her 
uh, cancer, she died at the age of 53, unfortunately. So smoking also affects the heart. Uh, smoking increases the risk for coronary heart, heart disease by two to four times. Smokers are also more likely to have stroke than non-smokers. Um, in terms of the lungs, smoking causes 90% of all lung cancers. Again, smoking causes 90% of all lung cancers. And this is important because for women, we speak a lot about breast cancer, but the second killer of women is actually lung cancer, not breast cancer. So which tells us that this is largely preventable. If one does not smoke, your risk of getting lung cancer is actually less. Other cancers that smoking can cause. Smoking essentially can cause cancer anywhere in the body. Such cancers include bladder cancer, blood cancer, cervical cancer, colorectal cancer, esophageal cancer, kidney cancer, laryngeal and oropharyngeal cancer like um, Terry Hall, pancreatic cancer, and stomach cancer. Another thing that smoking can cause is something called COPD. Smoking causes COPD, which is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis. And COPD is essentially is irreversible. I see patients coming into the emergency department all the time with an exacerbation of their COPD. They come in short of breath, we treat them, they're discharged, and then they come back again. Smokers are 12 to 13 times more likely to die from COPD than non-smokers. And, you know, I don't know if you've seen some people, they walk around with oxygen tanks and such. Those are patients with COPD. They're, many of them are dependent on oxygen. And it's no surprise because if you look at the, the picture, on your left, the pink, uh, the pink lung, that's a healthy, normal, non-smoker lung. On the right is the smoker lung. So the, the smoker lung is not able to deliver as much oxygen to the body as a non-smoker lung. Smoking also increases one's risk of developing clots. And clots essentially can form anywhere in the body. If the clot blocks the blood flow to the brain, it leads to a stroke. If it blocks the major vessels in the legs, you can have peripheral vascular disease. If it affects the deep veins of the legs, you can have something called a deep venous thrombosis, which can be fatal when the clot passes from the legs and goes to the lungs, causing a pulmonary embolism. Smoking also affects fertility. In men, smoking decreases the sperm count, and also it affects the sperm motility, how well the sperm moves, and also affects the sperm's morphology, how the shape of the sperm, which overall reduces fertility, it increases risk for birth defects, and increases risk of a miscarriage. In women, Smoking also increases the risk for infertility. It increases the fetal uh, risk for preterm delivery, stillbirth, low birth weight, and so forth. Other effects on smoking on the body. Smoking increases the risk for osteoporosis. And this is particularly important in women. As we get older, the bone tends to become brittle. Smoking also increases the risk for cataracts and age-related macular degeneration, which leads to blindness. Smokers are also more likely to have diabetes. They also, like alcohol, smoking also decreases the immune function, so it puts them at risk for having various infections. So medically speaking, if you're not smoking, if you're not drinking, it's medically speaking that, medically speaking, it's not something that you want to do. There's no benefit to drinking alcohol. There's no benefit to smoking. Um, so it's not advisable that you start. But for as many people that do have problems with alcohol or smoking or both, the time to quit really is now. You will do your body a lot of good by quitting. 
And research showed in the case of alcohol that the risk of liver cancer goes down by six to seven percent for every year you go without drinking. And after five years of abstinence from alcohol, the risk of laryngeal pharyngeal cancer decreases by 15%. And with regards to smoking, after one year of abstinence from smoking, the risk of heart disease becomes half of what it was. After five years of abstinence, the risk of stroke and cervical cancer is really is the same as a non-smoker. And after 10 years of abstinence, the risk of dying from lung cancer is now half of what it once was. So again, if you have problems with this substance, is it time to quit? Is now. And there are various resources out there that can help you to quit. Thank you. We are talking to each other as a family. We have a responsibility to you that is not only spiritual, but also for your own well-being. To think that smoking and alcohol consumption can affect the morphology of a man's sperm and eventually define how the child that is born will behave in life is a serious concern. Which means children can be defective or can be, can be defects in children all just because of the parents' uncontrollable lifestyle. And that is why I want to plead with us, if not for yourself, for the posterity, for the future, for their unborn children, for the people that are coming. It's time to give up alcohol. It's time to give up smoking. It's time to give it up. Not because of God, but because of you. <laughs> Because when people say they are not committing sin, they are thinking they are doing God a favor. But this time, we are saying, do yourself a favor. This thing is not good for you. And I will show you some other scriptures, and then we allow an interactive time. The doctor will come back. Good job she has done. Let's please celebrate our more time. We are going to have three different mics in the auditorium so that if you have a question to ask or a contribution to make, we want to discuss as a family. Is that a good thing to do? Now, Bible tells us about drinking, which is where I'm putting my emphasis. It says, alcohol is not for kings. Proverbs 31, when you read in verse 4 to 5, the Bible says, it is not for kings or limwell, it's not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Now, many of you will tell me I'm not a king, so it doesn't concern me. But the Bible says in Revelation 1 verse 6 that God has made us kings and priests. It means in the kingdom of God, each one of us is a king, each one of us is a queen, each one of us is a priest. And Bible is saying to us, alcohol is not good for us. In fact, in Proverbs 31, when you read in verse 6 to 7, the Bible says, give alcohol to the person that wants to perish. So what doctors have just discovered last year, the doctor said three years ago, if he had been... Presenting the same talk, he will have said, a little wine is good for your heart. But last year, they discovered that alcohol is now carcinogenic. Alcohol is now a killer. Alcohol is, no amount of alcohol is even good for you. But Bible had written it long ago. Whoever wants to perish, give them alcohol. I keep telling people that science is not anti-God. Science is only discovering what God has finished. Oh, long before science knew that the whole earth was round, the Bible said God sits on the circle of the earth. Long before, Bible knew that the earth is a circle. I pray that the things God has put in his Bible for his children will pay attention to them. 
In Proverbs 23, the Bible says between verse 29 to verse 35, he said, our call is for those that want to sorrow. I read that scripture to you earlier. In Leviticus chapter 10, when you read between verse 1 and verse 15, the Bible tells us that the sons of the high priest, they offered strange fire. You remember their names? Nadab and Abihu. And God made a declaration after that. He said, nobody as a priest must ever drink wine anymore. Why? The reason why they offered strange fire was that they were not in their right senses. And God killed them instantly. I pray in the name of Jesus, kings and priests, that you will not perish. Amen. That the things that kill people and destroy people, we have no power to destroy you. Amen. Oh, didn't I tell you the story of Lot earlier? You remember the story of Lot? Oh, the Bible tells us that Lot went to Sodom and the daughters of Lot decided to give their father alcohol to drink so that he would be out of his mind. And they had incest with their father because they knew that once somebody is out of his mind, he will do crazy things. Do you remember the story of Noah? When you read in the book of Genesis chapter 7 in verse 1, God said to Noah, only you have I found righteous in this generation. And because of Noah, God spared his family. Everybody in the house of Noah were spared. The whole world was wiped out. But when Noah came out of the ark, the Bible says he built a, a vineyard. He planted a vineyard. And then he made alcohol from the vineyard. And he began to drink. And he was drunk. And he was naked. That's what happens to drinkers. And when he was naked, one of his sons, he had three. One of his sons came and saw the nakedness of the father and laughed. The other sons came and they covered their father's nakedness. And when he woke up, he decided to pronounce a curse upon the generation that came from that son who saw his nakedness. Was he the son that made him naked? But that generation still carried that curse. He said, curse this Canaan. Say, servant shall he be to his brethren. I pray in the name of Jesus. That everyone listening to my voice or our voices today, mine and the doctor's voice, that God will give you grace to give up all these vices. It's an epidemic in America. They don't have a solution. Now they want to legalize marijuana. It's an epidemic in America. They call it opioid, what do they call it? Opioid crisis. I don't want to go into the politics of it, but they didn't get to that level one day. It was a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then they can't control it anymore. What we are saying is, why start what you can't finish? Why even look at it at all? Why make any attempt to even taste it? I pray today that no matter <laughs> what anybody had told you before is the benefit of alcohol, please, please, the disadvantages are more. As the doctor was talking, I just thought in my mind, I should have asked the youth church, the teenage church, that they should have been in this service. I just thought in my mind, because they are a very impressionable generation. They are the ones that want to make an attempt, test things, and their friends are telling them things in school, and they are wondering Daddy is just too religious. Mommy is too spiritual. Spirit Coco Mommy. And they are wondering, why should I? Why should, why should I? Why should I listen to her? And they are listening to their friends who said, try this, try that. My wife and I, we just came back from the redemption camp in Dallas. Redemption camp convention. Redeem. And as we are coming, driving, there were these children by the bus. Program was going on. And they stayed by the bus. Young, young teenagers. Maybe 18, 15, 16. And they were smoking. By a bus with redeemed Christian church. God reading on it. You can be sure the spirit of God didn't let it go. <laughs> I was asking for passage to pass. He said, wait, wait, wait. wait. Come, 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 come. Are you people redeemed church people? 
They said they deny. They said they are not redeemed church. They said they are not redeemed church people. Say, how come you are here with redeemed boss? You are with redeemed boss, and you are not redeemed people. They said, no, no, they hired them. They said they hired them. Because what she wanted to do, I'm sure, and I know I know her spirit, Coco, she's going to, she was going to say, okay, follow me, follow me, all of you, follow me, follow me. I will look for who your pastor is. They were smoking. When other people were being blessed spiritually. But what I've decided to do with the youth church man, we will repeat this session with them. We will go there and have the same session with them. But then, how can we succeed with our youths, with our teenagers, when they know daddy has brandy under his bed? How can we succeed? How can we succeed when they know that at 12 midnight, sometimes daddy goes behind to have a small cigar? How can we succeed when they know daddy is branding cigar in his hand, even openly? It is a disgrace for any adult to be holding cigar in the hand in public and he says he's a child of God. It's a disgrace. And it is an affront to God for anyone to come in the circle of the children of God and do things that are not of God. And I will tell you, if man does not complain or discipline such person, God will discipline. It is not good for the children for you to be doing things that you don't want them to do. You can't tell them don't watch pornography when you have porno movies in the house. You can't tell them don't drink alcohol when you have it in the fridge and you have a fridge under your bed. People are wondering, Pastor, can fridge be under the bed? <laughs> no, under. Under the bed. I know what I'm talking about. You know those fridges that people have and they put something on top and they cover it with a cloth and you won't even know it's a fridge? They decorate it very well. You'll be thinking it's something else. You don't know that's where they put their... When you have a cooler, a cooler, and you put two bottles and you put a, a, a cup there and you put it under your bed, is that not a little fridge? <laughs> don't people go to bed every night like that? Hello? Oh, are you now very holy? Answer me now. Oh, answer me. ICB, answer me. Do people, oh, they don't, okay, thank you, my wife. My, my, my wife said nobody here drinks alcohol. Do we do birthday parties and serve alcohol? No, they don't do it in ICB. Do they? Do they? Do we have gatherings and then there will be a free flow of beer? And people will be drinking? Please, let me, let me tell you what happens to some of those people. Bible says wine is a mocker. Wine is what? People don't know that when they are being given strong drink to drink, it's because they want to mock them. The Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 1, it says wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever, deceived, whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Do you know one of the things that I've learned that makes people to compulsively drink alcohol is when they give it to them free. But, 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 but pastor, how do you reject a free gift? It's just free. And I must let you know, they won't give you money to pay school fees free. But friends will give you free bottle and they are ready to pay. They tell it's on me. Everything you drink tonight is on me. Who knows what I'm talking about? In Proverbs 23, the Bible says in verse 20, he said, be not among wine bibers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the gluten shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Oh, brother, you are telling me, I, I, I'm working, I'm making money. I don't know where all my money is going. No demon entered your house. No thief took the money. But your lifestyle. You don't know where your money is going and you are playing, playing lottery. You don't know where your money is going. You are drinking wine every day. You don't know where your money is going. Every, I don't know how much they sell cigarettes. Every dollar you are spending, bit by bit, it is going. Hello? Bible says, what to certain people, and I want to tell you the people, Isaiah 5 verse 11. 
Isaiah 5 verse 11. He said, Woe to them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until nine, till wine he flame them. In Isaiah 5 verse 22, the Bible says, Woe to them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Have you seen people say, I need courage. As a young man, those days when we were young, they told us, if you need to go and talk to a lady, just take a little wine. We give you some, give you some courage. And some people think that they need courage. Anything that you can't do in your normal senses, please don't do it. Anything you need something to influence you, to do, it means it's not meant for you. Why don't you get courage by the Holy Ghost? The Bible said the righteous is as bold as what? As a lion. The wicked flee when no man pursue it. There is somebody hearing me by the mercy of God. Courage from God will come to you. Amen. I like this last one. I will stop there and allow you to ask questions. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 15 to 16. We like the technical crew to make sure the mics are ready. The Bible says in verse 15, it says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. That give it what? That put it thy bottle to him and makest him drunken also that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Verse 16. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee and shameful spirit shall be on thy glory. Give it to us in the new living. You know King James English, sometimes it's tough English, breaking it down is an issue. In verse 15, the Bible says, what sorrow awaits you who make your neighbors drunk? You force your cup on them so you can gloat over their shameful nakedness. Many young girls have been raped all just because they went to parties and they gave them drink. And they didn't know that they put something in their drink Child of God, if I don't like a thing, you can't poison me with it. If they're going to poison you, it's something you like that they can use to do what? To poison you. To poison you. To poison you. Now, people are going to Dominican Republic. And I think about 11 people have died now from America in Dominica. And they are still finding out what is it that is killing them in Dominica. They say something in the drink. They say whether it's something in the AC. Is it something in the air? But somehow when they get there, they drink something. So you know what I did? I asked Pastor Sp uh, uh, Sister Pat. I said, I hope that's not where we are going. <laughs> because in the next few weeks, we are going on missions. Because where we are going to is Dominica. So he said, no, it's different. That one is Dominica Republic. Where we are going is Dominica. Uh -huh. What we are simply saying to you is, be careful where you go. Be careful the associations you have. Be careful the people you are relating with. Don't go to the place where they are taking strong drink. Long ago, my mom again told me, if you don't want to get wet, you don't go to the riverside. If you don't want to get what? You don't go where? If you don't want the sting of alcohol to eat you, don't go to where they drink it. Don't start it. Keep away from friends who do it. Let them understand that you serve a living God. Now, where should I go? I go to the place where I can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because every man, we always want something to fill him and make him to do things beyond the, the, the ordinary level. So I go to church. I go to Holy Ghost service. I go to spiritual programs where the Spirit of God can fill me and then I can do things that are extraordinary. Amen? How many of you remember the story of Daniel? The Bible says in Daniel chapter 1, he took a decision. We will not take the wine of the king. We will not corrupt ourselves. We will not defile our body with the king's portion of the king's wine and the bible says when they came to test the intelligence of daniel he was 10 times better than other people i pray that when they are going to test your intelligence 
everyone in ICB, you will always be 10 times better than your contemporaries. Yeah. I want you to bow down your heads. Is there any one of us struggling with any addiction? These ones we have mentioned, or the ones we've not even talked about. Anybody struggling with any addiction? I'm praying today that grace to be delivered of that addiction, that grace will come to you. Oh, that they, they asked a doctor. They said, how come you are drinking and smoking when you doctor know that this thing can kill? And the doctor responded, something must kill somebody. And he continued to drink. I pray for you today that whatsoever has beclouded your reasoning and you are not able to take control of your own life, that the mighty hand of God will pull you out from any addiction controlling you in the name of Jesus. In this church, people will be delivered from the power of alcohol. In this church, people will be delivered from the power of secrets, from the power of nicotine, from the power of indulgences. In this church, people are delivered from addiction in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I'd like the doctor to come forward. Is there anybody, you have a question? All you need to do is lift up your hand. There are different people with mics. Yes, let's give a mic to Dr. Aki today. There. Yes, sir. Bring another mic for doctor, please. Hello? Hello. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor. All I want to do is to reinforce what the young doctor has just said and what our pastor has been talking about. I happen to be a clinical psychologist by training and license. And I'm retired. But I want to say, first of all, I want to give thanks to Pastor and the wife for thinking it fits to bring this kind of program to us. This is a kind of program that money cannot buy. Number two, I want to tell you that everything that the young doctor has said are true. Everything is true. But I want to add something from my own personal experience. I don't know whether you people are familiar with Hausa, Hausa people. If an Hausa man is sick and he comes to you seeking your help, can you help me? I'm sick. I'm so sick and I need something. And you say, okay, yes, you can take uh, Tylenol or Hador or whatever. The next question he will ask you is, have you actually suffered from that sickness before? If you said yes, then he will take your advice and do what you are asking. So that's why it's important to have somebody who has gone through the mill, as I have, that the topic we are talking about today is so important. Now the do uh, pastor said, don't start what you cannot finish. I want to add an addendum. Don't start what you cannot finish if what you start is a bad thing. If it's going to lead to destruction, because most of the scientific breakthrough in this world actually started and was not finished by the person who started it. Somebody started it, and then some other people take it off. I was reading, I, I, I went to York uh, College for a graduation last uh, Saturday. And I was, as I was looking for a place to park my car so that I don't get a ticket, I saw a place where they wrote Tuskegee Airmen Street. Tuskegee Airmen Street. You will find it is the street next to your college. It's a rickety kind of street. In fact, when I look at it, I said, ah, Tuskegee Airmen, these are pioneers in their field. So it is this rickety kind of uh, street alley that you will name <laughs> after those people. 
I say, ah, true, true, really true. There's racism in America. This is nonsense. I just look at it and I went. Then finally, I tell you a story of a professor. It's a Nigerian professor who went to Aquinas College. I'm not going to mention his name. And uh, he was so brilliant. And he gained admission to Harvard University. Actually, he got a PhD in Harvard in 1979 because he's my friend. And I was there. But because he had a problem. And what problem was it? Alcoholism. You know, after he went back to Nigeria, it took him 30 years before becoming a professor. Something he would have gotten within three years. And that was because he was so alcoholic. In fact, so alcoholic it was so bad. He himself confessed to me that at one point in the house, when he got drunk, he was running after his daughter. He wanted to make love to the daughter. And the daughter had to be running about the daddy. No, it's me. It's not mommy. It's it not is me. Well. It is Can well. you imagine that? It is so, well. I just give that example to show you how bad it can be. Then the last one. And then I quit my match out. There was a rich man in my town. I will not mention his name too. He was an alcoholic. He used to drink beer so much. But towards the end of his life, because of that alcoholism, I think he became a mental patient. I will explain to you how it is a neurosis. Now that man, anytime he's drinking beer, if he fly, you know flies like uh, to patch on the, on the glass, he will look at the fly on the glass. He will say, this, uh, <laughs> you, this, uh, <laughs> You want to share out of my uh, something. All right, I'll teach you a lesson. Then you will kill the fly and drink it together with them. What do you call that? That, Madness. Cannot be, that cannot be anything but neurosis. So ladies and gentlemen, I just learned my voice, my little voice, because I cannot improve on what uh, the, the pastor and the, the young doctor have said. I thank you for listening. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So before you ask a question or you make a comment, what you want to contribute, have you tried it before? <laughs> Did it work for you? There is somebody here. Hello. And then there is a, a brother there. Doctor, Let I him be the next. Out, um, I want to ask, what about second-hand smokers? So, because they don't smoke but apparently they get either cancer or... Secondhand smokers. That's a good question. So she's asking about secondhand smoking and what secondhand smoking is. is It's not actually the individual that is smoking, but maybe the family member, uh, for example, you know, the husband, the father of the house is smoking and the children are exposed to the smoke. Does that put those children at risk? It does. It does. Secondhand smoking, too, has been shown to uh, lead to increased risk for cancer, especially children. Uh, they are at risk of having asthma. So you see many children of uh, smokers who develop asthma and they come in, too, due to um, the cigarette exposure. They're having asthma attacks and such. Thank you. Yes, sir? Okay, yes. Yes, um, I used to smoke a lot. Thank you, Jesus. To the extent that if I don't buy a packet of cigarette at 9 o'clock in the night, I'll be looking for what we call roach, the small one that you throw away. And then um, I went for a course for my job, and they showed us the lung of somebody who smokes and the one that does not smoke. The difference was too much for me to bear. So I decided that day, I said, I'm going to quit, but it was very hard. Anybody that smokes and wants to quit must be very, very determined to stop. I did a cold talking. And you must have a reason or give yourself a reason to stop that smoke, uh, the smoking. So I decided to give myself a birthday present 20 years ago. Mm. 
So, nine o'clock in the night, I was nervous. I bought a packet to take home. I opened it, took a stick out of the 20. I lit it. I said, wait a minute. Did I just promise myself that I will give myself a present? I squeezed it remaining 19, put it in the dustbin. I finished the last stick, and I said, God, let this be the last one. Hmm. Got home in the night. I was living by myself. I felt like smoking. I wanted to go into that dustbin. Garbage. I said, no. In the morning, somebody advised me to drink water. I drank water, and I went to the toilet. Because before, if I don't smoke, I can't go to the toilet. So I drank a cup of water, and I went to the toilet. Since that day till today. God showed you mercy. God showed you mercy. That's actually another side to this. Because many times people want to stop, and they don't know how to stop. They don't know how to get out of it. I pray that there will be another opportunity that will help us to be able to share from medical perspective and from spiritual perspective how you can stop addictions. Um, is there any other comment, question from anybody? I just want to add yes, one please. thing, um, particularly with alcohol um, abuse. If you're having problems with alcohol, uh, it is not advisable that you try to do it by yourself because you can also experience something called alcohol withdrawal syndrome because the brain is so used to the introduction of alcohol in the system that once you stop it immediately you can have withdrawal symptoms which also can be deadly so they get tremors there's increased temperature they can have seizures so there are programs available for anyone that's willing that wants to go through the detoxification of alcohol where they can enroll in and they can safely stop drinking alcohol thank you uh, please um, i would like everybody to please rise on their feet now i would like to ask if service today has been very very useful or meaningful to you i'd like you to just lift up your hand let me repeat it if today's service has been extremely beneficial let me really see you lift up your hand okay now put it down now if you see any of us any of our members indulging in alcohol or in cigarette or cigar she will should we fight them? I think we should pity them rather. We should do what? And see and find a way by which we can help them to come out, out of it. How many of us will be our brother's keeper from today? Hello? Now that simply means you will see it may be your husband, it may be your wife. It may be somebody in your neighborhood. It may be somebody who is in this fellowship that you know. And you know they are indulging in this. Please, this message is on YouTube. Get it and let them listen. And I trust God that we'll be able to help our brothers, help our sisters to live a healthy life in the name of Jesus. Father eternal, we thank you for how you have helped us to bring this message home today. We pray that your hand of mercy will be upon all our lives in the name of Jesus. Those vices that is making people sick and they keep coming to God, to church, they want healing, they want this. Lord, I pray, let those vices be taken out of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Help us to live decent lives, healthy lives, to live with discipline help us to bring our appetite under control in the name of jesus thank you blessed father in jesus mighty name we pray please be seated we have a few other